You know, there, there, there are countries around the world that have almost no IBUs. <laughs> And here we are, right? A thousand IBUs in a beer. Just packing them in. And out, you know, <laughs> Indonesia and egregious. You know, and other place, they just they they're like, we don't have we don't we have, don't have any have IBUs. No IBUs. But you're right. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. But I digress. Coming to you somewhat live from the Beard of Whiskey Studios, high atop Barley's Tap Room on Washington Street in glorious downtown Greenville, South Carolina. I'm Russ Heaps, and welcome to this episode of Big John and Five. That's where I get my good buddy here that we've named this episode after, <laughs> Big John Richards, to pick a beer from one of Barley's 72 taps or 50, 60 cans and bottles. We sniff it, we sip it, we get bits about it. John tells us a little bit about the brewery. Sometimes we get a little brewing history and we drink an awful lot of beer. John, with that. You used the word awful. I did? <laughs> awful lot. An awful lot, yeah, that's <laughs> a plenty. We drink a plenty of beer. Yes. And so what are uh, we So we're drinking a classic. We're drinking a, a personal long-time favorite, and it is Sierra Nevada's Torpedo IPA, extra IPA as they call it, and it's got it's just a glorious beer. Um, and this is one of the one of the beers that started it all. It's been consistent for 30 years. It's a beautiful beast of an IPA, 7.2 percent. Wow, perfectly balanced. It's probably going to be a little outside your wheelhouse, although you have been more accepting of these beers than I'm woke. Than you certainly used That's to because was. I'm woke. I'm, yeah, I'm right. woke now. In the, <laughs> where beers are concerned, right, I'm woke. 100%. <laughs> I'm woke. Um, the balance on this is perfect, though. It's got a big and, and a hefty bite up front, but it balances down into that sweet, malty backbone. And then you get a big, pithy, grapefruity finish on the back, and it's that perfect balance, pine and citrus. Um, you get a little bit of that uh, um, kind of fresh, funky, um, like like black currant kind of funkiness out of it uh, because it's a because it's a super fresh IPA. And then the, the they actually they were one of the um, forefathers of dry hopping and they the reason this is called torpedo is they invented a machine that sort of looks like a torpedo that they hook up to the beer as it's in the fermentation tank and they stuff it full of hops and then the beer goes through the thing it's pumped back into they the tank they circulate it through they circulate it through the, the hops for a few days I presume while it's during, during, during its fermentation process they're hops torpedo yeah so were. right and what, it was really super fun getting to tour the um, the facility up in Asheville when they built that place in Mills River. I, I got, was lucky enough to get to go on an engineering tour, a behind the scenes tour. We were wearing hard hats because the thing was still under construction when we were going through. But they walked us through the brew house, and you're you know they got this giant brew house, big copper still, you know, pot right. still sitting on top of the yep. tanks and everything, yep. and then. You get into the fermentation chambers, and you're under the fermentation tanks. And as we're walking through, I'm like, damn, this place is clean. And every brewery, most breweries are clean. They have to Because be. they have to be. They have to be. But this place was sparkling, and I commented about it. And the guy leading our tour was like, yeah, because you notice everything here is built in line. So it's all built with stainless. There's no hoses. You walk through a brewery, it's covered in hoses. Everything at this facility is built in line so that there's no hoses in the building at all, except for the torpedo. You have to wheel the torpedo in with all the hops in it, hook that up to the tank with a hose. <laughs> then they take it away when they're done with it. I was like, that's phenomenal. It's just a super cool concept. I love the way they do it. It, it builds this beautiful, beautiful beer. And it's made, when I've done lists for people, um, it has consistently made it on the best IPAs in the country, especially 
if I'm trying to reach the whole country with it, because this is, I think, available everywhere in the United right. States. Yep. If you you can get your hands on it, and it's one of the best IPAs that's ever been made, and it continues to be. It is just wildly underappreciated for what it is. I don't know whether it's going to be able to live up to your I know I've flamboyant it, and robust I've built it pretty heavily here. Uh, introduction, <laughs> but let's give it a go. Yeah. Cheers. Text Miss Lily. I love the aroma on that beer. That is West Coast IPA. My uh, smeller isn't good enough to get much off the nose. Uh, you're not picking up the big pine thing that's going on in there? Yes, that. yes I am. <laughs> That says we're here for a reason. <laughs> and the only reason I'm here is because I own the gear. So. <laughs> it's also Russ's favorite joke. It is. Oh, man, that's good. Oh, it's just perfect. I mean, there is no getting past the fact that that's a bitter beer. But the balance on that is so good. And it lingers dry, you really get to the back of this thing and you feel like you've licked the inside of a grapefruit peel. It's dry it's dry. I'm I don't I'm not getting a big bitter thing out of this at the end. Well to me it it's there's two reasons for that. One is the the sweet balance on the maltiness, and that's what this color, why this is the color of an IPA. And the clarity. I mean, we've spent literally 10,000 years trying to get beer as clear as we could get it. And then over the last two, we've decided that everything has to be hazy. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Strap yourselves in. Here we go. So, just all I have to say is let appreciate the clarity of a good beer when it comes around. And that said, look at how deep the lacing is on that. I know, it's beautiful. I mean, that's a gorgeous beer. And when you're drinking a beer like this, any really good beer, especially a bigger alcohol beer, um, or well, once you get there past, there's a tipping point, but getting a lace like this, you should be able to follow the strata of each sip as it goes down the glass, it should leave a little, it should leave a little lacing behind. And a great beer in a clean glass looks like that, and it's gorgeous. I'm getting um, what I get towards the back of my tongue is the uh, malty, yeah, uh, bready kind of thing yep. going on. And that's oh, I lost myself when I got started talking clarity. But yeah, that's where the color comes in because you're looking at something that's got those caramel malts added in that creates that sweetness that balances out that bitterness. And that's why it doesn't taste aggressively bitter, even though it is, Yeah. because you get that balance. And that's what we've, we've lost our way a little bit in the last five, four or five years in the beer business. You said two or Well, <laughs> I'm, t I'm talking about something different now. <laughs> oh, okay. Just, I can't keep up. Take notes at home and see if you can do it. And, and we've had cycles of it where we've done stupid things. Like in the early 2000s, it was like, you know, how many IBUs can you fit in a beer? And we saw a beer come through with a thousand IBUs. A thousand. That's insane. And then it's, you know, how big an alcohol strength can you make it? You know, there, there, there are countries around the world that have almost no IBUs. <laughs> And here we are, right? Thousand IBUs in a beer, just packing them in, and out, you know, <laughs> Indonesia, it's egregious, and, you know, and other places. They just, they, they're like, we don't have, we don't we have any not, IBUs. No IBUs. But you're right. <laughs> I don't think that's fair. But I digress. Right. Well, what I was going for, what I was getting back to saying, was that it is increasingly important to me that you can brew a beer that's balanced. 
I love big aggressive flavors. We've talked about how I like things that taste a lot. But it's so important that you find a way to balance those flavors in there so that you're just not getting beat over the head with something sour or something bitter or something sweet or something whatever. You know, you want an array so that you can stay interested in the thing. Otherwise, you might as well just be eating a cake. I don't ever remember tasting this beer before. Is that right? I don't think I've ever had it before. Well, you've shunned IPAs for so long. But this, this is an IPA I could love. Good. That's, that warms my heart. This is... John's work here is done. Right. I built this thing up this big and I got, I got we that did. response. You didn't oversell it. It's, you did not oversell it. It is a wonderful, wonderful beer. Um, I was so glad to see it up on the board today. I was like, uh, Torpedo's up there. If we haven't done it already, we pretty much have to do Torpedo today. I am thoroughly impressed with this. Excellent. Nice. Nice. Uh, you, know, you know what they say about putting a monkey in a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, they're gonna they're gonna tick, 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 spell tick. something out, right? And you you hit right. you hit this one right here. Excellent. Uh, I think we should say something to the fact that Sierra Nevada. We do it anytime we have a Sierra Nevada beer, we bring this up. But they've got their East Coast operation is about fifty miles from here, fifty five miles from here, and it is a destination in itself. It's a, it's, it's a, a cathedral. It is. It's a cathedral to beer, yeah. and it is just, it's just magnificent. If you're in the Asheville area, and, I'm, and that would be anywhere within 100 miles of Asheville, uh -huh. it's, it's well worth taking a couple of hours and driving there. Yeah, it's, uh, they have a restaurant with absolutely fantastic food, all locally sourced from North Carolina farmers. They've got a big outdoor area of gardens where they grow a bunch of stuff that they use in their beers. They've got a bunch of room to run around. A big amphitheater yep. and, you know, they Sitting do right on the French Broad River, too, and you can jump in and paddle down the street, paddle down the stream and get out at another brewery. Yeah. If you ever get tired of being in Sierra Nevada, which you won't. You won't. You won't. <laughs> Anything else, sir? No, that's good. I think we've, I think we've said enough. I think we have as well. Cheers. Cheers. So damn lucky. See you next time.